speaking with listeners of community radio in Canada. Well, I'm Amy Goodman. The Toronto Star reported today that the province of Ontario has secretly passed an unprecedented regulation allowing police to arrest anyone near the G20 security zone who refuses to identify themselves or agree to a police search. At least one person has already been arrested under the new regulation, which expires after the G20 summit ends. Well, Stefan Kristoff is a Montreal-based activist who recently went public with news that he's come under harassment from the Canadian intelligence agency, the CSIS, over the past year. Several of Stefan's friends and colleagues have been visited by the CSIS agents seeking information on his whereabouts. Stefan joins us now. Stefan, thanks for being with us. It's uh, my pleasure. Did you come with anyone else today? I hope not. <laughs> well, why don't you talk about what you've been going through? Um, well, CSIS, the intelligence service here in Canada, uh, has been given a bloated budget. What and does CSIS stand for, CSIS? The Canadian um, Sur um, Security and Intelligence Service. And it's an agency that basically surveils citizens. And um, over the last months, um, myself and other activists uh, across the country have been in a situation where CSIS agents have been showing up at our homes, asking questions early morning hours, late at night, um, and basically cultivating this um, culture of fear around the G8 and G20 summits. Those who are vo voicing dissent against uh, government policies or critiquing the G8 and G20 process are facing this chill effect. And the fact that those who are participating in organizing street protests like we'll see in Toronto in the next couple of days are under this type of pressure really speaks to the larger security crackdown that we've been seeing here in Toronto. I mean, the Toronto Star in this report yeah. of this regulation that was uh, enacted on June 2nd and will expire on June 28th that n most people had never heard about. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture on the front page of the Toronto Star, Dave Vasey standing mm -hmm. outside the Eastern Avenue Detention Center where he was arrested um, under a law allowing police to pick up people refusing to identify themselves. Um, the regulation was made under Ontario's Public Works Protection Act and was not debated in the legislature. According to a provincial spokesperson, the cabinet action came in response to an extraordinary request by the Toronto police chief, Bill Blair, who wanted additional police powers shortly after learning the G20 was coming to Toronto. Well, in a sense, I think that um, the fact that the police can search, detain, question, and hold anybody, any citizen, in Canada, in downtown Toronto at this time around the summit, um, it speaks to this reality of a security uh, culture that's been cultivated here in Canada by the Conservative government, one of the most right-wing governments in recent Canadian history. And this new legislation, I think, um, speaks to the reality where also we've seen a three-layer massive security fence around downtown constructed by a corporation, SNC-Lavalin, from Montreal. Uh, explain the corporation and say the name. It's SNC-Lavalin, and it's based in Montreal, a corporation it's an engineering giant. Um, they actually uh, produced millions of bullets between 2003 and 2005 for the U.S. Army at the same time of the invasion of Iraq. Um, so this is a corporation that's in inherently tied to the uh, military-industrial complex internationally and also has been tied to the clampdown on dissent here in Toronto. It's really incredible when you, when you see the fence and also just see the almost 20,000 police and law enforcement officials that are patrolling the city six police vans <clears throat> have actually just pulled into the lot where we are broadcasting from um, uh, we're just next to the water we're overlooking the city of Toronto um, this police fence this security wall has yes. shocked a lot of people around the core of uh, Toronto in fact most people were given the day off yesterday and today thousands of people are staying home they're just told to stay away yeah um, talk more about this core security wall and what it has meant well, it's meant that uh, downtown Toronto has become a fortress, literally. Um, we could just hear now aircrafts that are hovering around the downtown core. Um, the sense has been erased. Um, so when we hear all these 
uh, speeches and languages coming out of the G8 and G20 about transparency, globalization, sharing of ideas. The reality on the ground is that these meetings are happening in a militarized fortress. And the fence itself was constructed by a company that has been directly involved in contracts that are linked to the NATO-led military occupation of Afghanistan. They're building um, all sorts of public work projects in cooperation with the Canadian military and the U.S. military. This is SNC-Lavalin based in Montreal. And also, as I mentioned, the contract with the U.S. Army just after the 2003 invasion of Iraq. So this security fence, I mean, speaks to the whole reality today. I think of walls around the world. We're talking about uh, walls going up, the U.S.-Mexico border wall, the wall, the apartheid wall in Palestine. Um, and at the same time, the leaders at the G8 and G20 are talking about walls coming down and free trade. But for people, walls are just going up, even in the largest city of Canada. How has the surveillance of you, Stefan Christoph, mm -hmm. affected um, your activism? Well, let's say that um, in Montreal, um, we do a lot of work with artists. And the fact that government agents were questioning artists about my political views and my political organizing and my work uh, in the media, um, I think is really something that should be denounced. Uh, it's something that I've gone over thoroughly with my lawyer in Montreal, and we've documented all these cases. It does uh, uh, present um, a sense of, of fear, unfortunately. And I think that um, the fact that this is happening and that CSIS agents are questioning artists who are socially engaged in the lead up to the summit, people that um, you know are committed to social justice, hip hop artists, um, who are vibrant members of the community, agents showing up early in the morning, late at night at people's homes, speaks to um, the fact that the Conservative government in Canada is trying to normalize this um, clampdown and this um, culture of, of fear that is really rooted in the post-9-11 ideology. The Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, this is extremely significant for him, this meeting. He'll be front and centre for this period of days, they're hoping for a seat on the UN Security Council. And, he, and he's invited Oribe from Colombia. Canada and Colombia have just signed a free trade accord despite the systemic human rights abuses against labor leaders and human rights activists in Colombia. Um, so he's front and center, but he's also welcoming those who are abusing human rights. Do you carry a cell phone with you? Not right now. <laughs> Why? Um, well, I believe that um, it's best to try to be secure about communications. And unfortunately, people like myself who are publicly protesting are under surveillance. And I, I feel it's important to speak about it because it's a larger reality, especially within First Nations communities, within Arab and Muslim communities. After 9-11, the whole clampdown on um, Arabs and Muslims in Canada, like in the United States with special registration, was um, um, an attack on basic human rights. And that continues. And the fact that now it's moved towards social justice activists, I think they're testing the waters of the waters they are lapping up certainly against us right here on this dock i want to thank you for being with us stefan christoph um you can go to our website at democracynow.org we'll link to the piece he just wrote uh, at rabble.ca i'll be speaking tonight at massey hall along with naomi klein and uh, vandana shiva along with um maude barlow of the council of canadians and the bolivian ambassador to the united nations pablo salon on saturday night i'll be speaking at uh trinity st paul's united church in a special fundraiser for uh ciut the community radio station that broadcasts democracy now here in toronto you can go to our website for details democracy now is produced by a remarkable band of people mike burke chief of the producer mate angeli comet steve martinez nicole salazar hani masood robbie karen uh dennis moynihan I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.